Okay, this is the second part of the upgrading speaker internals topic. If you've not seen the first part, watch that by clicking on the link up there. So to recap, my customer wanted to upgrade the components inside his Monitor Audio Bronze 2 speakers. Having experienced the vast improvement my Modify Stage 2 upgrades made to his amplifier. In his words, let me read this out, the difference was amazing. The sound stage really opened up and there was such an improvement with the clarity of the sound. The bass was so much more tight, clear and controlled. And the detail in the other frequencies became really three-dimensional. Thanks for that really positive feedback. That's uh, encouraging when, when, when I hear um, feedback like that. So, what could I do for his speakers? Um, as I mentioned last time, he sent me some photos and I derived what upgrades would be cost effective for him. Principally the capacitors and wiring would make the most uh, improvement and uh, this applies to the majority of speakers out there, uh, not just these. Let's have a look at those photos. At least in this speaker they have uh, used some polycaps in the tutor circuit, albeit basic cheap ones, and a small air core inductor. But over in the woofer circuit, there's a bipolar electrolytic capacitor and an iron core inductor. Ugh. In this case, he decided to upgrade with good quality polypropylene capacitors, and I recommend a clarity caps for this application. You could also improve the resistors and ditch that iron core inductor for an air core one for even greater improvements. Of course, it can also be done in stages, and a step by step approach. Um, allows you to get comfortable with the process and not spend a fortune on one go. When you start looking at upgrading these components, you'll soon find that the good quality ones, polypropylene capacitors and air core inductors, are considerably bigger than their cheap counterparts. So upgrading in place can be a bit tricky. How plausible it is depends on how far you want to take the improvements. For scale, here's a, here's a general purpose 2.2 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. And here is oops. Here is a good quality polypropylene of equivalent value. Here's another 4.7 microfarad electrolytic and again, actually this is quite a good one, and again the equivalent value polypropylene. Spot the difference? So what do you do? Well, if it's one or two parts, and depending on the space on the original circuit board, you may be able to fit them on to achieve the significant improvement they will make to the sound quality. Maybe try a different orientation, mount them vertically, whatever will work. In many cases though, it won't be possible. So how do you, as a DIYer, get around that problem? Well, you can lay out your new improved parts on a new board. No, you don't need to have a new circuit board designed and manufactured. It can be done on any suitable backing board, maybe a prototyping board. A 160 by 100 millimeter Eurocard size board is about six pounds. You don't want a full copper clad or strip board for this. Even a thin four millimeter MDF sheet will do. Here's a 3D model I've put together to show the concept. You want to drill holes in, in suitable places to secure the new components to the board with tie wraps and or glue as appropriate and wire everything together as per the original PCB scheme with direct point-to-point -point links. Twist the wires together and sold to secure. This is actually a better and more reliable connection than going via PCB. It doesn't look as neat, but it works well. What I suggest here is that you drill small holes as well to push the component leads through to the back of the board. That way the top is neater and the wiring is hidden underneath. It's important the circuit stays electrically the same as the original to achieve the frequency response the crossover was designed to, which suits the drive units and the cabinet. Experts could make changes here based on actual measurements to fine-tune the response further, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Next we have the internal wiring. This is usually a thin, maybe 18 gauge PVC coated copper. Okay, I can't give a one-size-fits-all replacement wire recommendation, but look for at least a good quality oxygen-free copper, OFC, of at least 16 gauge, preferably fatter still, 14, 12 gauge, 2.5 millimeter, particularly for the base mid. The insulation material or dielectric uh, is also important and has an effect on the sound. PVC typically providing a time delay smearing effect. Um, go for PTFE, Teflon, polyethylene or, co or cotton. There are just too many options to cover in a short video. 
if you shop around and aren't in a rush, you may even be able to pick up some end of reel reductions of good quality speaker cable, which you could use. Check out eBay. Here, I selected a 16 gauge tinned oxygen free copper in cotton insulation. The film material used in the box, polyfill, foam, fiberglass, whatever it is, uh, also has an effect, as can the construction of the walls. Are they braced? Are they damped? Lots to think about. As I hinted earlier, I'm no speaker expert and there are better qualified people out there with regard to loudspeaker design, drive units, cabinet resonance, room treatments and so on. A good place to start is with uh, Danny Ritchie of GR Research's videos on YouTube. Um, they're quite informative. Beware the cheese. I hope that's been a useful introduction to upgrading the internals of your speakers for improved sound quality, be that pace, rhythm and timing, sound stage, instrument separation. All of these will be improved by the techniques I've talked about. I concentrate more on the electronics, but like here I can help with upgrade crossover component selection, etc. So if you're looking to upgrade your hi-fi, have a look at the Modify website, uh, link in the description. Uh, or drop me a message uh, and I'll see what I can do to help you get to a high-end audio system more affordably. Thanks for watching. Feel free to give the thumbs up below if you liked it and you can subscribe to the channel for future videos on my value-based approach to high-end audio. Stay safe. You'll see me next time.